Today we're going to do a dirty pour on this and we're going to talk about what a dirty pour is with resin. So hang on. Howdy, howdy y'all. Okay, so I've got a little bit of clear coat left and I am going to be filling up my tray with as much of the clear as I can. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it around as, it might be really, really super thin, but push it around here so that way the colors will move on it a little better. Is that always necessary? No. Uh, sometimes I just seem to like how the resin behaves a little bit more. But I wanna talk about dirty pores. So we'll use the surface. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put this off to the side. And I'll do this right here. Aha. So I don't, I'm not using my normal catch-all resin cup, which is one of these guys. And say there's been a few pores in this. But um, I figured with a clear cup, you can see a little bit better about what I'm doing. Now, with resin, it's a little tricky because sometimes the colors interact together. Um, I, I think the same is true with acrylic pores. Like you've seen the fancy tree ring pores where you pour it down and you give it a little bit of a wiggle. Well, with resin, those little wiggle lines don't stay really super defined. They kind of have a tendency to blend in a little bit. So with resin, it helps pouring it in a different way. But what is gonna help is the kind of colors we pour in here. So that's what I'm gonna work with today. And my color palettes are pretty much in the blue tones and uh, I've got a purple in here, but a lot of colors that will be really, I think will function well together. Let's just put it that way. So let me get them kind of lined up here so I can, you know what, I'm gonna move this whole tray to, to the side and get my colors out on this tray. Ha <laughs> ha, now it'll seem like I'm a little bit more organized. Right, okay. So I'll put, at the end of this video, I'm gonna put a picture of the colors that I'm gonna be using. So you will know if there's any color you're interested in, you can pull from that shot. And I'll have the brands and the whole bit on that part of it. Let's see, what have I got here? I'm trying to get them almost in realm of light to dark in a way. Not always critical, I'm just kind of doing it that way right now. Okay, so first part here I'm gonna talk about is my white here is a little bit of stone coat base tint, which does create cells, but you use just a tiny, tiny bit in it, but most of the opacity comes from a white paste. And this particular white paste that I'm using is a, a Lorez white paste. Super happy with that. Front gate open. Oh, oh, hold on. Zoe, it's okay. Zoe. Zoe. Okay, I live with an engineer. He has electronics everywhere, including the front gate. So as you can tell, the dog has gotten used to that. And it's like, oh, I must alert everybody. Even though you don't already know, there's somebody at the gate. <laughs> but she's doing really good right now and not barking too much. Okay, so I'm going to put this light blue blue in next and it's got a really pretty interference color to it so we'll go with that one i've got a mixture of colors that have uh inter different qualities to it like interference qualities or glitter or maybe they're transparent so a lot of things that'll be interesting there's some I guess you could call it cream colors. I'm gonna put all of it in this one spot. There's not a lot left in this particular color, so we're just gonna pour the whole lot in. All right. Oh, I'll get a little bit more out. This is a pretty good sized tray. I think it's like, Maybe a 15, 16 inch tray. So it's gonna hold on quite a bit of resin. All right, so that's that. And this one here, I believe is Mermaid by um, Color Art. 
or I think the, the particular line is resin art, sorry, but color art's the one who makes it. And these are her resin colors. And it's a luster color. Uh-oh. Let me pause soon. Hang on. We got the greetings done. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hi, hubby. Let's see. Throw the rest of this color in. All right. Okay. Hubby says hello. Okay, this one here, I believe is candy blue. Um, don't quote me on that. But it's a gorgeous blue color. And then I've added a little bit of extra shimmer with one of the blingets from uh, Color Art. And it adds a little bit of a shimmer that is also um, has some interference properties to it. Get all this blue out. It's a gorgeous blue. Trust me. So what I'm going to do here, let me just talk you into what I'm going to do as far as the um, putting the uh, dirty port into the tray. Uh, I'm not going to have a lot of play with it. In other words, when I pour it in, it's going to be an initial pour it over the surface, maybe move it a little bit, get it definitely around the edges, and then let it sit. I might manipulate it a little bit, but the best thing you can do with Dirty pores is not to manipulate it a whole lot. All right, I'm gonna put, I've got some silver here. I'm gonna put just a little bit, not a lot. I'm gonna sprinkle it around. And then I'm also gonna put a little bit of black. I've been debating on how to put this black in so that the blues still sh are the shining you know, star, because we want that. All right, and then this one here is a couple of the transparent inks that are by um, Just Resin. So I wanted some transparency to it. So that way the wood can show, shine through. I'm a big fan of wood grains and stuff like that and letting the wood be a star. And sometimes I've done dirty pours where I've put in a lot of clear resin into it and it helps with showing off some of the properties of what you're pouring onto. All right, let me get all that out. This is gonna require quite a bit of resin in it. All right. Scraping out my cup here. I'm using the edge of the cup to help scrape off the popsicle stick here. Okay. I just realized I'm not really utilizing my camera space there. All right. And let's see. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more white. Little bit more silver. And then this is a black currant, which is a really gorgeous purple. You can't see it by this, but you can see it by the side of the cup. Hopefully that shows up a bit. So we're just gonna pour that sucker in there. And then I'm pour some white on top. So I've got white in the beginning of it, and that's just me. I want the white to be able to interact with the other colors, uh, mainly to bring out either feathers or cell interaction. Well, it's probably not gonna bring out a whole lot of feathers, to be honest with you, because I'm not gonna be using the heat gun to blow it around. All right, I think that will do it for now. Move that there. Get these off my tray. Let me 
just a little bit of white on top, not a lot. I hope I got enough color in here. Okay, hang on a sec, I'm gonna clean off my hands. Okay, I'm back and I repositioned the camera and put the tray back in place. So I got all my clear out, or most of it. Scrape the edge off here. Get rid of any kind of big blobs. Because we want every last little drop. All right. And then the trick, get your resin out, stick your popsicle stick right along the edge with a little bit of resin stuck on it. And, uh, Put it to the side, let it cure, and you should be able to pop it and peel out your resin. Or at least most of it. All right, I'm gonna heat this up a little bit. What I'm gonna do here is mainly I wanna get some clear coming close to the edges. Doesn't have to go all the way to the edge, but close to it. Um, so probably play with an area of like this all the way around. Obviously the center is already covered. What this will do is help me um, move some of the resin around. And it's going to be a thin, thin coat. Hopefully I'm staying in camera here. But all I need is a thin coat right now because I've got plenty of colored resin. And what I'll do is when this thing is done, I'll get an alcohol rag and hit the sides if there's any resin that got on the sides to clean it up. It's pulling off my gloves. <laughs> because this is a enclosed environment meaning a tray and I don't want to get resin on the outside of the tray and mess it up okay get that with a little bit of heat my go-to resin stone coat art coat and in this case a couple of the different properties are going to come into play sorry saw a couple sneaky bubbles trying to get past me um and one of them is a long working time which i'm utilizing a lot the uv red uh the uv protection on is really high but the third property is because I'm using this as a tray, people might use this to stir, serve food on it. Not like directly on the tray, which I discourage anybody from serving food directly, like meaning like put the sandwich directly onto the resin. Don't do that. Put it on a plate, put the plate on the resin. Um, but it can stand high heat. So um, I believe it goes up to 425 it may be between 425 and 450. I don't know. But they did a little uh, test on it where it just impressed the crap out of me, basically. Um, but they got a pot of boiling water on the stove, and then they accidentally, like, moved it off the stove and put it directly on the countertop. And it's the same base that they used for their countertop resin that they created the art coat with. And so it has that same high heat protection on it. So I don't want somebody just, like, to be able to use a coaster of mine. It's like, oh, it can only be coffee cup hot or something like that, and somebody brings them a bowl of soup and it's way more than coffee cup, you know, that would be a problem. So that's why I like this. Okay, enough of that. All right, so here is my cup of glorious colors and you can see all the different colors in here. So what the plan is to do is to pour it in one big motion, a big heavy pour that goes around and comes around and I might even loop it. And then just let this stuff spread a little bit. 
and then I'll start moving the tray around. And I gotta be mindful, I got some resin already on my hands. And I just stuck the cup in the resin too. Yay, I'm doing good. So I'm moving kind of slow. But I've also got the wide mouth of the cup really close to the surface. All right, I'm not worried about that little squiggle. And I'm just gonna let this stuff move and do its thing for right now. Just be very mindful of it. In the meantime, I'm gonna zoom you in and I'm gonna clean off my gloves. And you can see how the resin is starting to interact a little bit or move. I play some some elevator music right now, but I don't have any. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, that's done. So let me bring you back out here. Okay, I'm trying to bring you back out. There we go. Now we're doing it. Okay, now we're too much. There we go. It has a, a one button on it now, which is great. All right, I'm gonna touch this with a little bit of heat. And I've got clear bits in here, a little bit there, and I might even have a little bit there. And if clear ends up staying, I'm okay with that because, you know, that's a little bit of the wood glimmer showing through. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and tilt it so I get it to the edges or close. This is a very gentle tilting. So what we're probably going to do is get a lot of blends going on. Just double checking my gloves. I'm going to try to heat this up a little bit more. So just touch the edges. Oh, didn't get that one. Right by the handle. And yeah. What's really interesting when you start doing the edges and you start getting this circular motion going on, you'll get this little bit of resin that'll run around the side like it's like its own little train. You can introduce a little bit of movement that way. But also the other resin will follow in suit too. Almost got all the edges.
right. Trying to roll it off so it has a nice edge to it. There we go. Okay. That is looking pretty. All right. Now, of course, right smack dab in the middle of this. I've got some kind of white speck. Oh, great. It's going to leave a little string there. All right. No, well, that didn't do too bad, actually. All right, now's a good time when you've got everything kind of settled to look around. Actually, I'm going to hit it with these one more time. Get rid of any of these air bubbles that probably got moved to the surface. gone for bubbles wise it's a good time to look for hair bits so I'm looking at an angle being like at this kind of an angle here working with my light to see if I see any kind of changes in surface tension it's amazing it's like where do the hairs come from when you're really careful about things they could still come up I use my trusty little wooden skewer to scoop them up, and I don't think I got it. Let's try that again. All right, we're gonna let this sit and percolate a little bit. Um, now remember, I use this stone coat base tint. Sometimes it interacts with the colors over a period of time and things can develop like over the next couple hours. So already while this has been sitting and I've been looking for hairs, things have been developing over here. So I'm gonna bring you in for a close up. See this area in here? A lot of things are developing. Now this could be one of those situations where it's like completely covered or it could be where it's just in a few spots. And I kind of hope it's in just a few spots. So this is really cool. I love that dark current color. It's just really pretty. Next to these blues. That black gave it a little bit of contrast in there. Really cool. All right, until tomorrow, we'll let this puppy cure for a little bit. Later. Morning, everyone. I couldn't help myself. I had to go check this thing out first thing in the morning. I'm sure I'm not the only one that has done that when they work on a project. It's like, gotta go check it out. Wow, I'm like super stoked with this. This turned out really good a lot of depth in there a lot of variations of colors and effects and really happy with that i love the contrast over here compared to the nice blue kind of river running through it i'll bring you up and over Pretty cool. Now let me give you a concept of scale. There's my hand with this, so it's a pretty good, good size piece. All right, guys, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell. Get notified anytime I put a video up. Later, y'all.